Today, we're going to be talking about absentee owned businesses, owning a business, having it make money for you, and not showing up every day. I'm David C. Barnett, and you're tuned in to Small Business and Deal Making, the podcast, YouTube channel, and blog where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium sized businesses while controlling risk. So if you're looking to take control of your future through buying a business one day, or if you already own a business and you're looking to grow or exit, you've come to the right place. I talk about interesting things, I talk to interesting people, and I answer your questions every week right here. So be sure to hit like and be sure to hit subscribe, and let's get to it. All right, everyone, it is, it's September, and it's good to be back. The summer's over, it's time to get to work, back to school, all that sort of thing. And I've got some great questions submitted by all of you guys over the course of the last few months uh, through email and Twitter and YouTube video comments. And thank you very much. So the question I'm going to answer this week is from Yaroslav, who is watching what to do with cash in a business. Let me read Yaro's question to you. He said, I had a question about absentee owned businesses. And in your experience, what types of businesses lend themselves to being easier to absentee own? I've been looking into nail and beauty salons, but wanted to get your input as you have a lot of experience in small business and acquisition. Well, thank you, Yaro. Um, yes, I'd love to answer this question. So if you're going to own a business and you're not going to be there, I made other videos before where I talk about the regional manager skill set. So to quickly recap, if you think about any kind of business that is owned by a big corporation, so think about a chain gas station, right? There's a store manager in the gas station. They don't run it independently. They have to report to someone and they report to some kind of regional manager who might oversee a dozen or two dozen locations, right? And so that regional manager is observing the performance of the business. So if you're going to own a business and not go there, you need to have those skills. Now, what kind of businesses are going to lend themselves to being easier to have you develop the regional manager skill set? Well, one of the easiest things to do is simply to observe what other kinds of businesses are typically absentee owned. And those would be the businesses that are typically owned by major corporations, right? And they, they span two, you know, sort of poles along a continuum. There are businesses that are highly systematizable. So if you think about a fast food chain restaurant, um, a lot of the mechanics of what happens in the restaurant as far as what the people are doing is highly systematized. You know, like this is how you make the hamburger, one, two, three, you know, do the steps. But as you get further from the floor, the management systems are also highly systematizable. So, you know, calculating the number of tickets every day, the number of people that walk through the door, sales conversion rates, you know, how many people take the upsell, you know, they take the fries with that, et cetera. And so it's easy for someone who, who owns multiple units to have store managers running those stores and they can keep an eye on what's going on in those businesses. Now, the other end of that spectrum would be a place where even though there's a lot of decision making and management, there is a large pool of people you can draw upon to manage that particular type of business. So for example, hotels. So you might own a hotel and you want to put a manager in place and there are actually education programs that turn out hotel management people that you know learn a bunch of skills and then they can go off and get their first job and become experienced. And then you have a pool of experienced hotel management professionals that you can hire to come and run a hotel for you, right? And so, so that's kind of the spectrum of the businesses that are most easily operated. And now I'm going to talk about, you know, sort of the, the danger space, which is if you're out there looking at buying a business, you will sometimes see that a business is being advertised as absentee owned. Now, it could be a hotel or a fast food restaurant, right? It could be one of these highly systematizable businesses or one where there's a lot of professional labor available, could be. Or it could fall into this other category where, for example, you have a transmission shop and somebody owned the transmission shop for 30 years. And for 25 years, they were the manager of the shop and they ran it every day. And they know intimately everything there is to know about the transmission shop business. And then they decide to move to Florida. 
and they put a manager in place and they call that person once a week. Maybe they have access to the back end, you know, uh, CRM system. They can see what the sales are. They can look through video cameras and see what's going on in the, in the shop. Um, and they can kind of keep an eye on it from Florida, right? So when you run into a situation like that, here's the danger. The reason that person has the regional manager skill set is because they used to do the job of being the manager and they know the business intimately. So they know what to ask. They know how to observe if things are being done correctly or not. They're attuned to what to look for to see if management is slipping. And I would argue that a lot of the times these people are not actually absentee owners. They're just long distance owners. So I've known people who have made a habit of spending winters in Florida, but they still work on the business just like they did if they were back home, right? In, in the cold white North, they will be answering emails. They'll be doing the banking. They'll be doing the payroll. They'll be, you know, looking at deposits. They'll be doing all the work they used to do up North, but they'll be doing it from their condo kitchen table down South, right? And they'll advertise that business as absentee owned, but they have not created the systems and, and all of the mechanisms required to allow for a true dashboard management style. What do I, what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, I know a guy who owns multiple businesses and he has a dashboard report for every business on a weekly basis and his managers are responsible for having this filled out. So for each business, there are a few key pieces of information. He looks at them and he's able to determine if things are performing well and he can compare the dashboard metrics. So these are the key numbers, key performance indicators is sometimes what they're called. He can compare them with last week last month and a year ago, same week, for example, and see which numbers are trending in which directions, right? And you can see how the business is doing very quickly. That's often not found in some of these businesses that I'm talking about, like the transmission shop example. And so that's what you have to be careful of. You give the example of a nail and beauty salon. So within that sphere, you know, I know that there are these sort of budget franchise um, hairdressing shops. And I've met people before that have owned a dozen locations. That would probably be an example of a highly systematized operation where you're hiring people that are, you know, barbers or hairdressers, and they know how to cut the hair and everything. And you have some kind of management system that with checklists that ensure that, you know, someone's responsible for making sure the shop's cleaned every day and they count the till in the morning, they count the till at night and they count the inventory every week or whatever. And, and that's all very organized. Or at the other end of the spectrum, you can have a chair rental shop, which in my opinion is more of a real estate investment because you're, you're simply collecting rent from people who are kind of operating their own business. But in both cases, you have to have some kind of method in place to make sure that the standards and everything are being met or else, you know, you're not going to meet, you're not going to keep your customers with the full cert, with the, uh, you know, employee based hairdressing model shop what you're going to have is uh, potentially customers not being happy. But in the chair rental shop, if you're not on top of what uh, is happening in those businesses, then your customers who are actually the hairdressers are not going to be happy. And you might start to lose some of those people and run into all kinds of problems. I have a, a personal friend who owned such a shop and ran into a problem of, you know, difficulty between the hairdressers that were renting chairs and the personal relationships would cause people to want to depart. And then he had problems filling the schedule. And so certain times of the week, he had no one who wanted to work. And then all of a sudden he had a customer problem because people would want to come and there wouldn't be anyone there. And so while it may seem that it's very easy to run it in an absentee fashion, it you can get drawn into it and you have to be ready and able and have a plan of how you're going to manage things. If you do get drawn into it and you have to kind of take management action. Even the best managers out there suddenly get into car accidents, suddenly develop substance abuse problems or gambling problems or what have you, or get personal relationship issues and need to move out of state or whatever, right? And so there's always a risk that you're going to have to step in and take over. And if you live on the other side of the planet, or if you're, you know, several hundred miles away and you have a full-time career and you just can't do that, then you're going to need to have a plan of what you're going to do 
if you suddenly need to execute on getting hands on to manage some kind of crisis. Anyway, if uh, if you're interested in learning more about buying a business, then the best thing to do is head over to businessbuyeradvantage.com where you can learn all about how I can help you buy a business. You can learn about my online course. You can learn about you know, those video playlists there. You can learn about the consulting services I offer and my, my group coaching program as well. Um, and with that, thanks a lot. Great question, Yaro. And um, keep them coming, guys. Let's Let's talk soon. Bye. So how can you learn more about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses? Easy. Head over to my blog site, davidcbarnett.com, where you can learn more about me and how I work with my clients. You can learn more about my books and the online courses that I've prepared for you. You can find out about how to subscribe to my email list, the YouTube playlists, et cetera. There's literally hundreds of hours of content there, all for free, and I'd love for you to be my guest. Special thanks go out to Jeff Alpaw Customs for being my tailor. Men all around the world can look dangerous, just like me, with the help of Jeff Alpaw Customs. JeffAlpaw.com. Use the code DCB10 to save. They handle multiple currencies and ship anywhere you happen to be.